Hello, my name is Anna Hall and this is my final exam video for MELS 602 Research and Assessment for 21st Century Executive Leaders. In this video, I am going to be discussing the work that I have completed on Artifact 2A, which is an analysis and action plan for teacher empowerment and leadership. I am also going to discuss what I have learned as I completed this artifact this semester. For Artifact 2A, my analysis and action plan for teacher empowerment and leadership, I was asked to conduct research on some of the following researchers such as Todd Whitaker, Robert Marzano, Linda Darlin Hammond. And I had never heard of Todd Whitaker or Linda Darling Hammond until I started um, completing my work for Artifact 2A. Some of the things that I learned about Todd Whitaker was that he is a motivational speaker for teachers and administrators and he shows administrators how they need to go above and beyond for their teachers and instill empowerment and leadership responsibilities in them. Um, Linda Darling Hammond, I learned that she does a lot of things to um, develop educational policies and standing up for teacher rights and things like that. Um, Robert Marzano, I'm very familiar with him and at White Plains Elementary where I work at on a daily basis we use those higher level thinking questions and question stems that Marizano has created. Um, some of the things that I learned from completing this research on Artifact 2A is that as an administrator you need to show your teachers that you care about them and you care about their opinions and thoughts on things because right now in education, this is such a trying time with all the changes that are going through. And it seems like we have more setbacks than we do successes. And it's very important that as a leader, that you assure, you assure your teachers that it's going to be okay. And that, you know, you believe in them and they are there for a reason. And they are there to be um, respected and their thoughts and their opinions are very valuable to the school as well as the students that they teach. For Artifact 2B, I will be completing a graphic checklist visual. Um, in this artifact, it asks you to develop a visual checklist that shows the best practices um, for teacher empowerment and leadership. Um, to complete this artifact, I will use 2A to help me. How I will complete this checklist is I would use a Google Doc format because that's more convenient and teachers seem to like that more at White Plains Elementary as opposed to paperwork. Um, I would ask them, you know, are you using the higher question stem thing, um, question stems in order to produce higher level thinking students? Um, and how do they feel when they use these question stems? Do they feel like they're getting results from the students? Are the students' responses not on task or not in aligned with what the question's asking? And also another thing is we're having a county math shift taking place right now in Surrey County and I'm actually a math trainer on that team and we've developed these question stems for math that's aligned with the higher level thinking questions that Robert Mar Marzano has developed and also I would ask them you know when they're using those in math how how do they think you know that's going for them as well as you know what are the students responses like um, another thing that I would include on this checklist is, um, you know, what other best practices are you using daily in your um, daily classroom instruction? Um, and, you know, what are some things that you think we need to change or you need to change or you need help with? 
for Artifact 2C, the gap analysis, I would be using the checklist from 2B that I have created to determine the gap in student learning. And this, of course, would be the foundation of my action plan for um, student learning and development. Um, I feel like the biggest gap in best practices is going to be with the math shift that's going to be taking place because this is something new that's very new to all teachers and not all teachers are going to introduce the way that their students learn math the same way and I feel like the results of student learning is going to be all um, the data is going to be all over the place because since it's a very new thing you know we're not able to determine what is the best way to introduce this type of learning of math into students and with the higher level thinking questions. Artifact 2D which is opportunities for empowerment. In this artifact I would utilize the results of the analysis and identify opportunities for teacher empowerment as the foundation for my action plan. And as I just discussed with the math shift, I feel like the biggest thing that we're going to have to work on is how teachers are introducing this new way of teaching students of math because what we're trying to get students to do um, is to be more of free thinkers in math. And, you know, giving students a task rather than us standing up there teaching and showing them this is how you do it, you know. We're wanting to give them a problem and let them figure out what it is that they need to do and use their prior knowledge. For 2E, the action plan, one way that I would implement this with my grade level PLC is to discuss with each other because we meet weekly and we discuss, you know, what it is that students are struggling in, whether it be reading, math, science. Um, discuss what will, what are you doing in your classroom that's working for you, or I'm trying this and it's not working for me. Um, and we're able to build off of each other's thoughts and ideas and create, well, not necessarily create, but try other best research-based practices um, and the thing that comes to mind is, since we're moving towards this math shift, is what I might do in my classroom, a teacher in another classroom may be doing it a different way. But I think it's very important that teachers share their thoughts and what it is that they're doing to help students learn so that we can feed off each other and we can learn about how we can improve student learning as well as uh, daily instruction in classrooms. Um, a formative assessment that could take place with this would be what we like to call as 10-day data challenges where students are given a pretest that contained these math tasks that we're moving towards in the math shift and teachers of course you know they record the results of the pretest and they have 10 days to reteach and remediate and whatever it is that the students may need in the area that they're having problems in. And then after 10 days, students are given a post-test and hopefully within the post-test, students will show growth in the area that they were struggling in.